hi guys welcome back to my channel it's the lolo beauty and before we get started i just want to say everything in this video is alleged so um while our man was in new york he did a sit down interview and the interview was about an hour and some change and when i just said, tell y'all it to me it was like a tell all interview basically she asked all the questions that we wanted to know um our man our man's fans would ask him and at the end of the interview he even said that thank you for asking me questions based off of how you know me because a lot of people would just ask random questions but this interviewer did her job she knew is that you could t definitely tell she is a Armand fan for a fact and so i really respected the interview um he touched bases on a lot of things he did you know at one point he wanted to really not sign to a label but in that interview he said if the label come at him right you know um he is definitely willing to sign i really feel like armand is definitely reaching the height of his career and he's feeling it now and i love that and i love that he is very humble still with it and um in the interview he touched on um how he wish men would just love their women out loud and not feel like it's soft to show your women love i love that how you know because we all say this but for him to really touch base on it and um let us hear how he really felt about people coming at him about how he loves regine um it really showed his strength in it all um he was basically saying like it's nothing whack about loving your women. It's nothing weak about loving your women. Like, because if you meet me, you gonna know, like, I'm a real man. Like, I, I do this. Like, I am a real man. Because real men show emotions. Real men are honest, respectful, true to what they believe in. And that is what he's giving us. And, you know, at one point in the interview, he did touch bases on how before he re met regine which i feel like was key point to me before he met regine he basically was in a point in his life of depression without knowing that he was reaching depression depression i feel like a lot of people reach that point and not realize like that this is depression so whatever his life was before regine he had his own struggles as a man that he had to overcome and he had to face and deal with he said he didn't even want to go to the studio it was hard for him to get out of bed he didn't really want to talk to nobody and he really didn't understand why he was feeling the way he was feeling because you know what god when i when he was speaking on that all i kept thinking was you needed to you needed change you needed someone who was going to come in your life and and be about what you about motivate you i feel like i'm sorry to say this but in his past relationship you could just tell from the interview that it wasn't healthy he even said this without trying to say too much that he wasn't in a healthy situation it was a very off and on situation it wasn't stable he had a child in that situation who he loves more than anything who really made him tap into a different kind of love he said um legacy made him tap into a different kind of love and the bun he has with her is just everything but it just goes to show that when you're in situations that are not mentally healthy for you and you're off and on with your spouse and you're not wanting to get out the bed you're not you don't want to do things that you love like making music and hanging out with your friends then you have to ask yourself what is going on with me you have to face those issues and i'm so glad that it was to a point where he knew that he had to get up and fix it and do something about it do you get what i'm saying and so i love how he broke down the timeline of his relationship because this had been all on the internet people had been speculating and like he said me and regina we started off as friends i knew she had something in her from the beginning but we started off as friends we weren't doing no no crazy stuff we went sneaking we went no sneaky link type of situation we were really friends we didn't spend a night with each other we didn't cross any boundaries it was a true friendship but i started to really like her a lot we gravitated towards each other a lot that is what happened and the interviewer had got on my nerves for a second because she was trying to act like she didn't understand the timeline which was very clear i understood everything he was saying you know he did stumble on his words but he said what he said 
That's what I'm going to say. He said what he said. And I was like, um, yeah, let him clear it up for you. I'm going to hold on. Uh-uh. Be quiet, girl. Let him clear it up for you now. That's how I was thinking in the interview. Like, hold on. Listen. Listen, girl. Because he wants you to get it. He said, maybe your fans get it, but I don't get it. No. He said, I'm going to break it down to where you get it and they get it. And that's why I love our man. He said, pause. Let me. I want to make sure you get it. Okay. What happened was I was with the whole 2021. I was single. We we tried to work on our family at the beginning of 2022. Three months in, we we broke up again. I ain't go back after that. After that, I met Regine. Me and Regine became friends. But, you know, and then we got really close really fast and we fell in love. Like they hit the ground running. And I love that he said that and he just basically said it is what it is. Like the interviewer said she had a good point. We vocalized that you have people have sneaky links, people be cheen stepping out. They 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 put all this out, but it's uncommon to see a relationship in a public eye move so fast. Why was that an issue? But everything else in the public is not an issue. So I like that she touched base on that. I really felt what she was coming from. But I love the fact that um, you know, our mind really, really you know, he's a good interviewer because for one, she was trying to pull things out of him that he just wasn't going to get. He, she wasn't going to get. And I love that he stood 10 toes down on how he wanted to address situations and what he was going to say and what he wasn't going to say. I love that. I love that he still had respect for Essie to not bring her name in the interview, but to say my child's mother and, uh, you know, my, my girlfriend is going to be around my child. Like he straight said that this is what it is. This is what it's going to be. She's going to be around my child and I'm going to be in my child's life. And, you know, he never bash her, whether co-parenting is going good or co-parenting is okay or it's going bad. You will never hear our mom bash Essie. And like you say, he will never because that's his child's mother. And I respect him so much. He said he was getting legacy this week because of course he had to do a lot of stuff in New York. Um, so he and then she asked him you know what kind of household you grew up in and he instantly shut that down like you know some conversations you are just not prepared to have because you know when you go through certain things and traumas in your life you have to reach a certain level to be able to express that or to touch on that and so i like that instantly he said that's a no-no we're not going to touch bases on that that was big for me I like how he explained everything about him and Trey and, you know, how they started off with YouTube and how, you know, he don't really understand TikTok like that. I, I love everything that he touched bases on. I love how he said how he came up with, you know, his song, One Hour Past Midnight. Um, He just woke up in the middle of the night and just started writing. And, you know, he's... Y'all, this man is very intelligent. He is a musical genius to me. Trey is also, you can definitely tell they bounce ideas off each other. And they are both very, very, very um good at what they do. And I, I respect it and I love it. I love the love that he has for Trey and the love that um he had when they were a group um and how he still talks as if they're a group which that shows a lot because usually when groups separate they tend to just want to speak on themselves and that's it but for him to even want to still speak on trey and still speak on everything that they had going on that is very big of our mind you that just tells what kind of guy he is um but the interview was great y'all let me know some of the biggest takeaways y'all got from that interview what was the uh very telling because if you read between the lines he was telling us a lot of things um but i really love everything about that interview y'all let me know y'all favorite parts like comment and subscribe i love seeing our mind in this state i love seeing him hustle and grind the way he has been i feel like it's all paying off i feel like he is really really reaching the height of his career and i am happy that we have been here from the beginning all the way up to the come up